Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about the all new iOS 8.0.2 firmware, how it affects jailbreaking, and whether you should update if you're interested in jailbreaking. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. I'm opening up Safari here to go over some things before we actually discuss the recent news about iOS 8.0.2. So again, for some background information, yesterday Apple actually issued iOS 8.0.1 to the general public. However, the firmware was short-lived as it was then recalled by Apple and they started seeding iOS 8.0 instead. Now, just one day later, we have 8.0.2. But if you happen to miss what I actually released yesterday, which was a video covering the update, as well as some information related to jailbreaking and some new developments on the jailbreak scene, then just be sure to check out that video. Again, it can be found on my channel. And if you're on the desktop version of YouTube right now, there will be an annotation where you can simply click it to be taken to this video. Or again, you can just find it on my channel or actually down below in the more info, I'll include a link to it there as well. Because in that video, I go more into depth on jailbreaking and discuss some of the more recent developments so I really do recommend watching that video prior to watching this one and with that said let's go ahead and discuss iOS 8.0.2 which was again released today I'm going to switch over to this article here on evasion jailbreak and we're going to get right into the new information so starting off again today ensuing the short-lived 8.0.1 update which was recalled shortly following its release Apple issued 8.0.2 to the general public and like its predecessor 8.0.2 effectively patches the Pangu untethered jailbreak. That's not necessarily a bad thing though, and I'll get more into that in just a second. So in addition to being available for immediate download via both iOS's built-in over-the-air or OTA update ability, 8.0.2 can be downloaded through iTunes. However, current jailbreak users should definitely avoid the update, but because I have my iPhone 6 Plus here, I'm going to quickly unlock it and show you guys that I actually have the update available. I'm going to just dismiss that battery warning, turn the brightness down a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and refocus after tapping software update inside of the settings general section. So this is how you would normally perform an OTA or over the air update. As you can see, it says that iOS 8.0.2 is currently available and this release contains improvements and bug fixes. You can find more info on the release just by tapping that learn more button, but we're going to go over that now in this video. So let's go ahead and refocus here on the iPad and we'll continue with iOS 8.0.2 and information on jailbreaking. So with that said, in what appears to be a hot fix of sorts, iOS 8.0.2 provides a remedy to the peculiar connectivity and touch ID issues brought on by iOS 8.0.1. And in addition to correcting the blatant usability problems in yesterday's release, as with 8.0, the vulnerabilities exploited by Pangu to achieve an untethered jailbreak remain patched in 8.0.2, making it impossible for any device to jailbreak 8.0.2 untethered using the current Pangu jailbreak utility. Now, continuing on here, as far as 8.0.2 is concerned, the update appears to be relatively small, bears a revised build number, and is intended to not only improve a number of issues present in 8.0, but also those introduced with 8.0.1. And in addition to correcting complications with HealthKit that prevented developers from integrating their apps with Apple's new Health app, 8.0.2 also rectifies problems with third-party keyboards, the default photo library, SMS and MMS messaging, reachability, videos not playing properly through Safari, and more. And I can actually attest to the last one, I've had significant issues playing YouTube videos through Safari because I actually don't prefer using the YouTube app, but that's a different story. When actually opening up a video inside of Safari, it should crash on iOS 8.0, particularly on the iPhone 6 Plus, I've noticed more issues with that device again on 8.0. So I'm definitely going to update to 8.0.2 myself and let me tell you whether you should update to the newest firmware or not again it really depends on what you're running right now so let's go ahead and continue here with this article while again 8.0.2 does provide a remedy for the aforementioned connectivity and touch ID problems it's recommended that all those who are currently jailbroken on iOS 7 through 7.1.2 avoid the latest update additionally information on the current iOS 8 jailbreak 
status can be found in yesterday's video. So of course I recommend watching that because again, I'm not going to go over all of the recent developments. And although it may sound redundant, I cannot stress how important it is for those of you who are currently jailbroken on iOS 7 through 7.1.2 to avoid iOS 8.0.2 and any subsequent releases for that matter, as neither Pangu nor the evaders have completed their new untethered jailbreak utilities, which they're working diligently on, by the way. So to summarize, now that iOS 8.0.2 is released, both the evaders and Pangu can go to work applying what they've discovered thus far to the new firmware. It's really an ideal time for them to perfect their tools as they're also able to fully test said tools on both the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus with their all new second generation 64-bit A8 chip. Having said that though, for those of you who own an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch that's running iOS 7.1 through 7.1.2, it is still possible to take advantage of the incredible Pangu jailbreak utility to again fully jailbreak your device untethered. If you happen to, for whatever reason, miss my most recent jailbreak tutorial video, again you can find that on my channel. I really recommend jailbreaking for those of you who aren't jailbroken on 7.1.2. And really quick, one last time, if you don't have the option to jailbreak, you're on a newer device like the iPhone 6 Plus or even the iPhone 6 or really anything on iOS 8 for that matter, and you're interested in staying on iOS 8, then you should definitely update to 8.0.2 as it does fix a number of things. It's mostly a stability update. And again, it does correct some pretty annoying bugs. So. 8.0, update to 8.0.2. Otherwise, if you're on iOS 7 through 7.1.2, stay where you're at and stay jailbroken until the new jailbreak utility is released. By the way, both teams, again, the Evaders and Pangu, are working as hard as they possibly can to create the next untethered jailbreak that will liberate millions of devices. They're actually rushing for a release because Pangu and other teams are actually financed by third-party Chinese companies with other monetary interests in jailbreaking. So we can't expect a jailbreak sooner than in years past. All of that and more can be found detailed in yesterday's video. Check it out if you have yet to. And of course, I will keep you guys fully updated of the jailbreak status along the way. If you aren't already subscribed, just be sure to click that subscribe button down below. It should be by my name if you're actually on this video itself. Otherwise, you should be able to find it relatively close on the page. And also, if you guys are interested in my iPhone 6 giveaway, just be sure to rate this video up, leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section and download free app life by visiting bit.ly forward slash get free app life or free inside of safari and then after hitting download press the home button and open the app and if you're on ios 8 download the temporary secure profile which is strictly used for associating your device with its proper account in a more secure manner on the latest firmware it's never even installed on your device as it's immediately deleted once your account has been either created or reassociated after that simply download Download sponsored apps for points and refer friends. Each download and each referral counts as one entry. Points can then be used for various prizes, including paid apps, gift cards, and electronic devices. And don't forget to enter as soon as possible because that will be concluding in the near future. And of course, to be updated more often, such as when I create new videos like this one covering jailbreaking or even the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Plus, the forthcoming Apple Watch, or anything related to Apple for that matter, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you decide whether you want to update or not and provide additional jailbreak information. And as always, until next time, this is ICU signing out.